Today on Fund Indie Films, we are talking to Sam Muirhead of the Year of Open Source Project. Uh, Sam, would you like to explain a little bit about it? Uh, yeah, I'm just about to. Um, uh, I'm just starting right now in a, uh, a year-long project to basically try and adapt the ideas of open source software to various other areas of uh, of, of life, uh, which people have been working on for years and years and years. People are starting to make um, uh, hardware and tools and uh, equipment that basically um, uh, they allow people to see the uh, the inner workings of the plans of, and they kind of share those with other people to allow modification and I'm kind of taking that idea, um, trying it out in basically everything that I use, all the products, all the services, um, and uh, seeing where it fits, where it doesn't, and um, making videos about that throughout the year. Um, wh what are some of the uh, benefits you think that uh, you know applying open source principles to uh, various other p parts of uh, re regular uh, you know everyday life? Um, you know, where do you where do you think that there 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 are some really good untapped benefits, and where do you think there's you know some maybe some challenges with that? Um, I think there's uh, certainly a lot of challenges with um, a lot of the services that exist. For example, just um, uh, things like kind of uh, uh, internet access, uh, cell phone uh, services, those kind of things. I think I'm really going to struggle there simply because it's very difficult to build your own cell phone provider, you know, <laughs> if it's just me with one cell phone then it's going to be very difficult for me to communicate to other people. Um, but uh, what I do think is, um, uh, is very interesting is just the way that um, open source uh, kind of methods allow um, sharing of information and a lot of the time people in whatever area they're working in around the world, they're kind of uh, having to reinvent the wheel, having to do the, exactly the same working thought process that somebody else in another place is doing on a very similar job. But because they're not sharing this information, because they're not kind of making it easier for everybody by putting it out there and allowing other people to use it, then it's kind of, it's wasting time, it's inefficient and it's uh, uh, leaving less time for creativity and more time with simply computational kind of things and uh, uh, complicated daily works. Okay, so um, uh, Outside of this project, uh, what's, what's your background? Uh, my background is actually in, uh, in music videos. I started at a, um, uh, a music television station um, a number of years ago, and uh, through that I went through kind of all sorts of different um, uh, uh, television jobs in New Zealand, post-production, working on news, working on some awful reality television, uh, working on power ranges of all things, um, all sorts of things like that. And then here in Berlin I've been uh, based in Berlin for the last uh, three years or so, almost three years, um, and I've mostly been working with a uh, small documentary production company called Frangothin. Um And so this is uh, quite an, um, uh, a very kind of lively social group of people. It's um, relatively kind of uh, low budget organization, but it's people who have a real enthusiasm for, for documentaries and for storytelling and things like that. Um, so it's a very international crew as well. We've got um, mostly kind of a uh, mix of German and English speaking and Spanish speaking people um, and then all sorts of other nationalities thrown into the mix as well and so different areas of expertise and backgrounds and all sorts of things like that so it's a fascinating place to work. Cool, so, so, so um, uh, uh, what are the challenges going to be for you um, in adopting sort of open source to every aspect of your lifestyle. Uh, what, what do you think is going to be the hardest aspect? Um, I'm not too sure what's going to be the, the hardest, but it's going to be something that's going to be kind of uh, on my mind every time I step out of the door, every time I consider uh, uh, buying a new product or uh, just going to the supermarket. You know, I'll be thinking about, hang on a minute, is this something that's traditionally copyrighted or um, uh, uh, what's the what's the licensing issues on this particular product and things like that? I'll be becoming very very familiar with uh, patent law and uh, what is public domain and things like that. Um, but I know uh, filmmaking traditionally is not a very open source uh, area of the world. I mean, it's, uh, it's it's all very kind of it's using proprietary products, it's using proprietary software. Um, there's uh, uh, very very little. Um, uh, open source about the way that we, uh, we we make films, so I'm really going to be kind of experimenting with that an awful lot this year. Yeah, that that that's been kind of an interesting thing I've been uh, noticing. Um, for instance, are, are you familiar with the film uh, Sita Sings the Blues? 
Uh, I, I, haven't seen that. I still haven't seen it, but that will be one of the uh, the first ones I watch in the next couple of weeks because I can't go to the movies and watch normal films, unfortunately, unless they're released under Creative Commons licenses. So that one sounds like yeah. an interesting. Yeah, it, it, it's a delightful little film. It's not for everybody, but uh, I, I first saw it at uh, Ebert Fest um, because film critic Roger Ebert loved it, and I saw it and was like, "Whoa, this this is." Awesome and hilarious and all that, uh, but but one of the things that that struck me was that um, you know e even though she did eventually uh, you know make your Creative Commons uh, and, and then uh, a few months after I asked her about it stuttering all the way at, at Ebert Fest she actually released all of the source files to it, but even those that they're stuck uh, in you know Adobe Flash Professional format, um, so a lot of people who would want to make use of it. Unless they're, you know, willing to, you know, spend hundreds of dollars or otherwise acquire, you know, Adobe Flash Professional, they can't do yeah. anything with it. Um, and so, so that that's kind of a real shame. Uh, hmm. You know, video editing. Until this point, uh, there there haven't really been good professional grade uh, editors, uh, you know, out there that are open source and. Probably the one place that I've seen a lot of progress, um, you know, going back years in the open source world, uh, is Blender, and they've done some pretty excellent stuff. Um, I don't know if you've been following with uh, the Blender Foundation uh, short films. Yeah, I've been watching uh, watching a few of them. Some of them look look very very impressive indeed. So it's going to be. Um, uh, but it seems that some people also use uh, Blender not just for kind of uh, 3D animation and so, but also people are using it for editing as well. So I don't know how well that works and and if that works particularly well. But uh, I'd like to kind of get my hands on it and, and try it out as well. In in, in my experience, um, Blender great for animation, great for compositing. You could totally. Uh, switch out After Effects for Blender. Mm -hmm. um, the, the editing, it works, although I think it's, um, you can really tell that it, it that wasn't designed as its main purpose. So, like, it always takes me a lot longer to try and cut anything in it, but it does work. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, I think that's one place is the editing aspect is really where, uh, you know, Getting a tool that's really fast to use and all that is uh, quite important. Um, we can talk about that a bit later because you know I I uh, can kind of guess that we have a lot to talk about there. Um, but but first I'd like to uh, ask you about uh, you're, you you've been talking about like open source cameras and and things like that like really going very far with that. Hmm. Um, would you like to talk a little bit about that and what yeah. you'll probably be doing? So in terms of um, uh, hardware that's available for filmmaking, one of the one of the only areas that is quite kind of advanced is things like camera rigs. For example, if you go to instructables.com or if you go to um, uh, Thingiverse or something like that, this is this mating community where people are sharing designs. Uh, they're sharing. Uh, you've got <laughs> got your own. <laughs> yep. Let me see if I can put it together on the fly here. Uh, but, but yeah, keep talking. Um, so on, on these kind of websites, basically, it's um, uh, people who uh, have adapted um, uh, rigs for their own purposes, or they've designed something that really suits them, suits their style of uh, working, and then they're sharing the design with other people afterwards. So it means that rather than me having to go to a um, uh, to a to a store and look at the kind of two or three different rigs available there for exorbitant prices. Um, that aren't necessarily designed for my camera or my shooting style. It's a way of uh, ensuring that um, you can always have uh, exactly what you need um, uh, to exactly suit your specifications. Ah, well, um, I think a couple of the bits to put it together are in a... Uh, um, I'm very very excited about this uh, this creation you're assembling up just outside of the picture frame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's nothing too special, but given the price and what it's done for me, it's uh, um, you know I'm I'm happy with it. Uh, and I and I found you know the instructions for it online. Um, mm. You know, have no clue what licensing the instructions are under, but uh, um, yeah, I'm sort of missing the T joint. Uh, and and the screw head here, but 
Well, I'll show you what I, what it basically is. Um, so you got you know this weight here, and then you get have a T joint mm -hmm. that you'll have that, and there's a little contraption that I've got that kind of has a you know a standard uh, screw head uh, yeah. there, and for you know forty bucks I had two steady cams. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's that's absolutely fantastic. And and, and and as you mentioned, you don't really know what what license it's under. I think it's the licensing is very important. But what's more important is the intention that people are sharing their designs with other people and encouraging them to to use them and modify them. Um, yeah, it, it was just somebody. Hey, here's instructions on how to make this. And yeah. uh, of course, I didn't have one of the tools that they were wanting to you to have in order to put it together. So. Um, I actually bought a slightly different connector part at the end that would avoid me having to drill through steel. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And what, what I found interesting as well is that now this idea of uh, using open source hardware um, to change the way that films are made is now being uh, uh, found in other areas. I mean, there's the um, uh, Apertus camera project, for example. Um, this is a group of people, I think it's mostly Europe-based, a um, uh, few people who have adapted the Alpha camera, which is an open source hardware camera that originally was just kind of made for, uh, as a security camera, I think, um, or for, for adaption for, for various other purposes. And they've kind of worked out ways of um, uh, changing the, the hardware, changing the, the, the firmware, and, and uh, adapting it for cinema use. And they're almost about to release a, uh, a version of this commercially at the moment. It's just been kind of since over the last few years they've been um, developing this, uh, experimenting, and working out what works and what doesn't. And uh, they're pretty close to uh, to releasing an actual working model. So I'm going to be going down to uh, to Austria to meet with one of the um, uh, founders of this and uh, having a play with his camera and uh, seeing kind of uh, how it all works and what the possibilities of having a uh, a camera that's more kind of open for modification for people to, to experiment and show their creativity. Now, uh, what um, camera have you, you been using uh, up till now? I've been using the 5D, Canon 5D, so that, of course, is not a uh, open source camera, so uh, that's <laughs> another reason why I really want to get my hands on the Beltus and see what works. Is, is that the uh, Mark II that you have? Uh, or the, the Mark II. Yeah, I, I, I love that camera. Um, <laughs> I, I couldn't quite afford it, but... Uh, you know, right beside me, I've got my 60D with the 3050 mm -hmm. on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, which um, I'd, I'd actually like to hear your thoughts on those because they aren't open source, you know, in terms of the hardware sense mm. or their their core firmware. But there's a project called Magic Lantern yes. that basically extends the firmware's features, um, and so people have kind of taken a closed tool and you know, open it up as far as adding some levels of functionality? Yeah, so I, I think that's a really good um, uh, precedent for just the idea that just because you've got a, uh, a product which doesn't necessarily uh, encourage you to, uh, to open it up, to play with it, to adapt it, that doesn't mean that you, you shouldn't or that you couldn't. It's, uh, there are all sorts of people who do amazing work in terms of uh, firmware hacks, hardware hacks, changing things around and uh, playing with the camera to make it more like the camera they want or a camera more suited to, to, to their needs. So kind of taking that open source idea and applying it to proprietary products. Yeah, so, so it's like I said, probably be like having like a uh, open source file browser on top of, you know, Microsoft Windows. Um, <laughs> yeah. Something uh, like that, yeah. And not, nothing wrong with that, but you're still stuck with Windows. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, so 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 with uh, the open source hardware, are you, um, do you have any ideas what you might do given that you know the hardware itself is uh, freely tweakable? Uh, with this, I'm hoping to take advantage of some of the um, uh, some of the people here in Berlin who can uh, hopefully hopefully help me out because Berlin is really an amazing city to be in if you're interested in uh, in tech and open source and IT. Um, and and uh, there's a great making community here, people kind of developing all sorts of amazing gadgets and, uh, and things like that. Um, and so, for example, every uh, Monday there's a camera hacking workshop, camera ha hacking meeting at a uh, hacking club just around the corner from me. So um, I'm hoping to get in touch with some of those guys, 
and uh, work out ways that we can um, basically turn my camera into a bit of a, a Franken camera in a way. So um, yeah, it should be should be quite fun, I think. That does sound like that. I'm a bit of a camera geek, so <laughs> that sounds immensely fun. Um, but, but, but yeah, um, so perhaps now we should maybe turn a little bit to the editing side of things. Um, uh, you, you have a background as, as an editor, so um, what have you used in the past? Um, you know, what, what do you see as, as your needs uh, for editing as uh, uh, you go through this project? Well, I'm, uh, I'm a Mac user, I edit with Final Cut, but I'm not a Mac user necessarily by choice, but more by default, simply because when I didn't um, uh, go to film school to learn how to edit and uh, learn how to work on films and um, things like that, I simply learned on the job, and the job where I learned had uh, Final Cut running and they had uh, uh, Macs, and so basically that was how I kind of learned about it, and then from then on, I just continued to get various jobs, working with Macs, working with Final Cut, and things like that. And so it's the uh, the system I know best, and, and the uh, system um, that I'm uh, best at working with. But um, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, I absolutely adore everything about Macs or Final Cut. There's all sorts of uh, problems with it, all sorts of problems with the um, uh, the, the the way that um, uh, I mean, it's it's a, it's a huge program, and um, uh, it's developed with um, uh, certain particular people in mind, but it's also got a lot of kind of um, uh, leftovers from the film and television days, um, which aren't necessarily uh, applicable to people like you and me who are shooting on Canon DSLRs who aren't working with tape, with broadcast standards, um, uh, uh, those kind of things, who are more using a, uh, a more simplified setup um, uh, and a digital workflow. Um, and it also doesn't really incorporate the kind of um, uh, changes that uh, we've seen happen in, in all sorts of other areas of work with online collaborative editing, with um, uh, uh, working kind of spread around the world and things like that. Um, so that's something that where, where I think um, uh, the open source world does have a little bit to, uh, to offer. So um, I'm planning on uh, trying out a couple of different um, open source uh, NLEs as, we go, uh, as I go through the year. Um, so I'm kind of keenly watching the development of Lightworks, which is the edit chair. Um, uh, 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 software, which is an established NLE, and they're planning to bring it up uh, open source, but it's not open source yet. So we'll just I'll just wait and see what happens there, and then try it out later in the year if it does go away. Um, but I am quite interested also in NovaCut. Uh, so NovaCut, um, uh, one that you're very very familiar with, of course. <laughs> um, NovaCut is of particular interest to me as well, basically because it is something um, that is designed kind of with this workflow in, in mind, and it's also um, uh, something that is kind of, rather than just taking Avid or Final Cut as a, uh, uh, as a starting point and then trying to develop a clone, it seems to be uh, going in a slightly different direction and finding its own ways of, uh, of, of developing. So, for example, there's the, um, I mean, two things in particular, um, uh, D-Media, of course, making the streamlined way of bringing files into the system and organizing files, um, and also the uh, online collaborative editing as well, so um, uh, using the, the cloud to its advantages and being able to um, basically have um, uh, uh, proxies or um, other video files online so that people can edit it um, in different locations. So I think that's really, really exciting and something that could definitely work for, for example, for, for Vlango Film, my particular documentary organization. So. <laughs> Great, great. It seems like you've uh, <laughs> you've been really researching us, and uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, um, you, you you've done the whole pitch and, and spiel for uh, for that, and and you know uh, we're really glad that uh, you know while we may not be able to meet you know all of your editing needs you know quite yet because you know we're we're still fairly early in development, mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know we we definitely you know want to you know see you trying out and testing it and. You know, using it for some of your videos, um, hmm. you know, a, a, as much as our current features allow, and you know, we. Uh, uh, by the way, audience, I'm a Devo NovaCut developer uh, uh, on this, uh, you know, with this uh, sort of side by side, um, uh, but uh, yeah, we're, we're really glad uh, to you know have you you know testing it out and using it for uh, your videos and. 
you know, talking to us about, you know, what's working for you, uh, what are, you know, sort of the most important things that, you know, you still need, and, mm. you know, s sort of really, really working with, uh, with you on making sure that, you know, Novacut is a really great tool, you know, for you, because you, because you know, you you are really one of you know uh, our our you know target users. Um, you, you know, you you edit you know professionally. You uh, um, and you're doing so independently, and and you want to collaborate with uh, other people um, on on your uh, videos and so forth. Um, you know, which we're, we're really looking forward to seeing. You know, how how you uh, uh, you know make use of that, and you know, uh, sort of the the uh, benefits and uh, you know all that of uh, the the collaborative editing process. Yeah. Um, well, I'm I'm quite interested. For example, with with uh, uh, what I'm with in this um, uh, documentary organization, it's a um, uh, we've got this huge group of different people. Um, uh, some of them are very new to editing. Some of them are more experienced. Um, uh, but it's we don't have kind of many full timers. It's it's kind of most people are just there one or two days a week, and it's very difficult to keep everybody um, uh, uh, on track in terms of what's been done on a project, where, which hard drive different files are on and things like that. Um, and uh, so FarmCut isn't quite meeting our needs in uh, that kind of way. Um, and so it is really interesting hearing about ideas to basically try and streamline that process, try and make it so that um, uh, uh, there's more kind of um, uh, ease of organization of all of these files. And basically allowing people to uh, come into a to a project and uh, uh, do some work on it from a different computer or from a, uh, from a different place and uh, uh, still work on the same kind of on the same footage and basically be able to work out what's been done on it since last time they came and saw the project, what kind of stage the project is on. So, yeah, an interesting development. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, for you know viewers who are uh, just kind of hearing about this for the first time. Um, I'm going to try and do something a little bit cool for you. Um, I have Novacut uh, running in another workspace on this computer. So I'm going to uh, show you what what we're talking about with the, the collaborative editing and how it looks different from your Avid or your Final Cuts or whatnot. Uh, sound good? All right, so screen share. And share. And okay, so um, here's the Novacut main screen, um, where you have different projects that you're working on. And so I click on a project, and so here's a current edit in progress. Um, you got your doodle area here, where you can kind of put clips, you know, before you're quite ready to assemble them in in a sequence. And below, right here, is the sequence view. Um, it, well, this is the uh, storyboard view, is what we call it. And so you have a sequence of clips with starting frame and ending frame uh, each, and you can reorder like this, and you can uh, change the starting and ending points in the clip uh, just by scrolling. Uh, so that's what we've got uh, here. And if I start up a second uh, instance of Novacut, this is going to be basically simulating the same thing as if it was across the world. Um, all right, so then I go to the same project. And as you can see, this is the same exact edit. But I can make changes on either side, and it updates the other one in real time. And so that's just a quick little demo of, of uh, sort of that, that uh, collaborative workflow. So you'd be able to, each person would be seeing the same project, uh, but, you know, be getting 
uh, uh, updates like that. Anyway, yeah, it's very very um, exciting. So, um, yep. So so we don't have you know all sorts of audio editing features or uh, anything like that, but we do have. Um, you know, uh, basic cutting workflow in that. And, and w what we're trying to do is rather than focus on having a lot of features, you know, just uh, the ones that we focus on that professionals need is figuring out a, a better way to do them that, you know, saves time and helps people work together. Mm. It's mean, and I mean, the, yeah. the open source um, uh, system as well is, is just, I, I really like the fact that with open source software, there is this kind of your uh, a developing uh, a, d a development team is a lot more open to collaboration from or, or input from its users as well. Um, I know uh, once again from, from Final Cut when when they released uh, uh, Final Cut X, for example, there were huge numbers of people who were kind of infuriated with the changes. Many of the pro users felt that they you know they turned their backs on them and things like that. And their only kind of method of, of protest of of trying to um, uh, uh, to do anything about it was just complaining. Basically, there was no other kind of real avenue for making changes, whereas with an open source system, um, with an open source workflow, there's a lot more, uh, uh, it's a lot easier to kind of, uh, that, that input is really facilitated, it's really um, kind of set up for input from users, for people to kind of point out problems, to suggest fixes, and there are uh, uh, ways to give constructive criticism and things like that. Um, and uh, this is also, I mean, because it's with open source software, in extreme cases, if you find that it's going kind of the wrong direction, you can you can dive on in there with development, or you can even take the project as it is and, and fork it, make your own offshoot of the project. So this means that any kind of development team is always very open to input and to suggestions from others, which I think is um, is, is really interesting. And as you say, like this particular project is in a relatively um, uh, early stage as well, and so a lot of the times from a project, I'm going to be looking at um, where open source projects are, or, or how far the kind of the open source version or, or option has come in a certain particular uh, uh, area. But even if it's in a relatively young uh, uh, stage, it's still it's important not to kind of uh, judge it as a you know, hey, my proprietary version does this, and this isn't able to, to do exactly the same things in exactly the same way. It's mostly about kind of coming at it from a with an open mindset and just just thinking, you know. What are the possibilities of this? If more people get involved in developing it, um, how do I see this progressing as uh, time goes on as well? So I think there's a lot of uh, really interesting ideas in open source software, and uh, NoteCut's a good example of that. Um, and it's, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's a very exciting kind of area to be looking at. Yeah, well, uh, I, I think one thing that uh, you know, you're kind of driving at there is uh, sort of one's ability to trust uh, you know their tools and open source. You know, like you said, it allows you, uh, people to contribute uh, changes to in, in sort of the direction that they would like to see it going. Uh, and it also allows, in you know, the worst case where a tool is going in a direction that doesn't work for you, that you know you you, you can you know in the ultimate case kind of create your own version and you know have an alternate development path. Um, going that, that that will meet your needs. And that's really, in a lot of ways, the main reason why we chose to take the open source route with NovaCut, other than just being fans of it in, in general, is because, you know, w with that whole you know, Final Cut situation, uh, you know, people could really only complain and switch if, if, the, if they could. Mm. Um, you, you know, whereas, uh, and, and that's a, a big, you know, big step to, you know, just completely switch your tool. Um, the, the post production offices, you know, with thousands of dollars worth of equipment just around one piece of software or one kind of family of software. So it's uh, yeah, it's, it's a big big move. Yeah, where where, you know, we wanted to make sure that, you know, artists could really truly trust that the software, you know, if if God forbid if Novacut went under or if we asteroid came down and wiped all or, or if we somehow you know <laughs> got infected with a brain virus and decided to be total douchebags and make Novacut totally unusable. Um, you know, people could take our source code and uh, find you know a good development team to put in whose hands they could entrust it, and it would uh, continue. And 
so, so I think that that's that's a really valuable um, element of uh, you know o open technologies is that you know you always have that option you you can trust that it'll be around and it'll be improving and I think uh, you know you were mentioning about uh, you know even if an, a certain tool isn't really ready today that often as important as what it can do now it's what it's going to be able to do in the future mm. um, you know I I is it going to grow and keep up with you um, or, or is it going to always be that same thing that it is today and or is it going to adapt into something that's that's different so you kind of have uh, you know, a matter of is it evolving with you or against you? Yeah, um, yeah, I think it's a very interesting, interesting point. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, um, you, you know, uh, you, you're uh, you know using uh, videos. Uh, you know, you'll be testing out video editors, but uh, I, I think uh, I guess that your your main purpose in, in all of this is to really document where. Uh, so such, uh, you know, w w where open source uh, is working and not, and, you know, what the challenges are and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and would you like to talk about how, uh, you know, you, you plan to document and sh sh show your findings to the world? Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be doing, um, uh, my original idea was, was basically to make a, um, make a film, you know, the, the classic kind of, like, I'll make a 90 minute film about, open source or, or, or something like that and then I realized that if you do that about a rapidly changing um, uh, uh, area of the world like open source then by the time you've actually edited it then it's out of date basically so I realized I needed to adapt that use that kind of open source release early release often kind of idea and use that with, with filmmaking as well so rather than making one big chunk of a film and sending it off to festivals rather than going to be doing at least one video per week. Some will be short, some will be long, some will be interviews, some serious, some funny, some ridiculous, um, and uh, using a variety of various different techniques, um, basically uh, whatever is the best technique to present the idea I'm dealing with. So whether that be um, you know, a serious documentary uh, approach or, or stop motion animation or um, uh, whatever I feel like that particular week, that's how I'm going to be um, uh, developing it. So hopefully that means a, a wide range of different approaches and a wide range of different uh, subjects for basically having um, uh, my story as a kind of a um, narrative all the way through, so tying all of these various different um, uh, uh, points into one kind of human story, so how does a person actually adapt to living open source as well. Very cool. Um, now, uh, before you know, we, we, we get talking all day. Um, you, you know, uh, um, your your uh, your uh, it's an Indiegogo campaign, uh, yes? Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm still running that. We've got um, uh, all maybe five days left, something like that. I should probably know that. Um, <laughs> this is so it's a, quite an unusual um, uh, uh, technique. I've never never done it before, and so this is also part of that kind of. Um, this is made for uh, uh, for the internet and uh, uh, funded by the internet as well. So I'm running an, Indi an Indiegogo campaign to um, raise money for this. Um, so uh, at the moment I'm just above uh, five thousand uh, dollars and um, looking for as much support as possible, of course, um, in this uh, in this in this production. Um, and uh, so yeah, I've been. Um, uh, uh, just trying to get the word out about that, and it's been, been fantastic the response in terms of um, uh, all sorts of people really interested in, in uh, my approach, or people who want to collaborate on projects, or uh, people who have interesting ideas, interesting ways of dealing with particular problems that might come up in, uh, in, in my life over the year. Um, so it's been really wonderful, especially just just meeting all of these uh, interesting people to, uh, uh, who, might, who I might be working with over the year. Yeah, uh, cool. So, um, what, what will the uh, money being a uh, uh, raised by the campaign, uh, what will you be using it for um, uh, during the course of the year? The uh, the key thing for me is um, uh, camera operators because uh, I can do a certain amount of filming of myself, but when I'm the subject and the camera operator, that's that's a little bit of a difficult situation. So I would quite uh, I quite often like to use um, uh, uh, camera operators, also taken from my documentary group as well, um, uh, and uh, I do want them to be able to eat as well. So. Um, uh, I'm basically trying to um, uh, earn some money to be able to pay people to help me out in the, in the project. Some of it will go towards materials as well, 
um, uh, uh, if I want to you know, make a camera rig or if I want to uh, uh, buy material to, to make an open source jacket or open source socks or uh, uh, something like that, then of course I need financial um, uh, uh, support to, to do that. Um, but the main thing is definitely the, the people around me because this is not something that one person can do all by themselves. I definitely need a lot of uh, uh, support for that. Um, so if anyone is interested in uh, helping me out with this project, do have a look at the video, which explains a lot more about the um, uh, project, and that's year of open, uh, indiegogo.com slash year of open source. All right. Uh, well, thank you for your time, um, and uh, it's been good uh, talking with you, and uh, good luck with your campaign. Thank you very much.